This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 22, Nork's Madness. It's the top of the round. It is Gavin's turn. Gavin has been trying to be non-violent right now, but he knows that maybe violence at this moment is an appropriate thing to do. He's going to take out his longsword and try to non-violently take down Nork. Does a 25 hit? Yes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, Nork's unconscious. Yeah, he does 11 non-lethal yes. slashing damage. Does that mean I just go down to zero? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not have to do death saving throws because you were yeah. taken down non-lethally. You're a Pokemon. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. No Pokemon die outside the mangas. So. <laughs> so <laughs> Gavin violently takes out his sword, points it at Nork, says, I'm sorry, Nork. I'm sorry. <laughs> and yeah, apparently he's Canadian now. Um, <laughs> probably, like, since it's a long sword, he probably uh, sweeps your legs out from under uh he sweeps Nork's la legs out from under her him and just bashes him with the shield and out Good. and Nork goes flying back and just just lands on the ground with a big thud and uh or a little thud her bird uh <laughs> just suddenly gets out of whatever was, you know, whatever bee was in her craw, and looks just confused. And, uh, Gavin just slumps against his, like, he just sits down, basically. He's just, like, had enough for today. Let's just... <laughs> does he take the spear out of his shoulder? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then he does, uh... Lay on hands on to himself. So. Actually, he. Hmm. But he. I feel yeah, like he would look at whoever is injured around him. Yeah, he, like, <laughs> probably, like, collapses right by Nork. And. Puts his hand on Nork's chest and gives him at least one HP. And then probably just like lays there and is just like, boy. So, you are conscious with one HP, but you do not have the rage that's going on. Though, I would suggest if anybody has Mage Hand, get that thing off him. <laughs> and Nark, uh, he kind of lets out this cough. Just. Uh, uh, he's just gonna still lay there on the ground and crack his eyes open and roll his head to one side and roll his head to the other side there's just destruction everywhere um the tent fire went out but that's mainly because well the tent got knocked down and smothered out the fire um, there's at least one guard, guard toppled over. Uh, there's a person who is standing still, and it looks like they've turned into stone with a, uh, crossbow bolt sticking out of the back of them. Uh, there's... Anyone who knows? Uh, roll me a history. Mm -hmm. You know, that asshat Ulin probably deserved being petrified. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I 
So, yeah. I, and, I was going to see the, the, the Ulan statue. <laughs> yeah. Like, eh. And, uh, you know, it, even though there's still, like, minor bouts going on, uh, there are finally guards on the scene. And um, they start gravitating toward Norik. Mm hmm. And rightly so. Yeah. Norik, you should you should give up that necklace. Hmm. Here's actually a question is how much does Norik remember of what happened? Uh you remember getting really angry and then blacking out. Okay. So he doesn't he doesn't Nork's gonna be like, "What are you? What? Why? What are you talking about?" Gavin thinks, and he looks toward Tierker and Rayanne for, you know, a better explanation than what he could provide. Let's just take that off and. Have you not destroy everyone, please? Your what, what are you doing all of a sudden? Dark's gonna grab all it. it. You were you slashing remember? and biting and just causing destruction. Do you see that tower? You did that. You knocked it down. How could I even knock that down? You nearly killed Gavin. And uh, a guard actually comes up overhearing this. Um, does Norik have any siblings? Um, I never specified. <clears throat> I never specified any siblings. Uh, okay, R roll me a uh, D four minus one. Okay. Mm. Older... Make it up on the spot and say, um... Oh, did you say older? Older or younger? Oh, um... Yeah, let's see. We'll make it up. Uh, let's do... I'll roll for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, lower is younger. So one older sibling. Yep. Uh, let's we'll uh, make this easy and and say it was an older sister who, um, you know, she got married and moved in and with the, her husband. And so by the time Norik left home, his older sister already had a life of her own and was uh, settled down. Uh, yeah, you recognize the hefty footsteps of your older sister, and probably the shadow of her too. And you hear a sigh. I didn't believe it when they said Pie Eater was back in town, but I heard you were tearing up everything. What What's wrong, Norik? Ah, uh, sis, is that you? And uh, she leans next to you, and uh, Norik's kind of sitting up at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, Tirk and Rianne, you look at these two, and they're like, they're the. If there wasn't such a like wide gap in age, you'd be like, were they twins? <laughs> like the same like brow structure and all that uh mm. except i'm gonna say your older sister probably can outmatch you under usual circumstances in a uh arm wrestling match mm -hmm. yeah she's she, she's a tough girl yeah well she is a guard 
And um, you recognize, being from Longborough and all that stuff, uh, that she is wearing, like, official, like, I am a sheriff um, uniform. And Nark's gonna look at the uniform and kind of reach over and poke at it and say, Hey, when did you get that? Oh, you know, sometime when you just kind of left town and came back. <laughs> that was a while ago. Yeah. Um, so, why are you doing things to make mom cry? What? Mom? What? Can, can I chime what in real quick? Happened? Yes, please do chime so, in, Turker. So, while he's distracted with this conversation, I totally want to sneak up behind with my thieves' tools and just take that freaking thing off. <laughs> okay, uh, first give me a stealth. Okay. Not bad, not great. What's your uh, passive perception work? Passive perception? Yep. Usually, uh, wisdom bonus plus 10. It'll be um it's thirteen. Thirteen? Cool. Yeah, that's that's doesn't notice you yet. Uh do a sleight of hand. And yeah. with uh your I was gonna just do the thieves tool roll. Yeah. Is... Yeah. Okay. Totally. Aw oh, man. <sighs> it's not graceful, but it still like unless... basically he's trying to pop it off without touching it. <laughs> yeah, give me a wisdom saving throw. It has electrical psychic currents. No. Yeah, mm. you you get like a impulse of like, ah, I should wear this. Then it just suddenly goes away. I I would totally like throw my eyebrows and glare at the necklace. Like, don't you do it? <laughs> you leave me alone. <laughs> I've had enough today. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. There, Nork. There's just a sudden like tug. And it seems like a heavy weight just, like, lifted off of you. Yeah, and that thing is going in its own little bag. <laughs> and, um... Nork's gonna... look around and, and look down. Is the necklace gone at this point? It's It's gone, huh? Yeah. So, if you and... looked around, I would probably still be behind you, like, uh... <laughs> Actually, the 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 more the more shocking thing, Norik felt this kind of little mental switch happen. Something something changed up in his his mind, and he looks. He turns his head to Herberta, and thinks, Herberta. Nothing. Roberta? And he's going to shout out loud, Roberta! Ooh. Uh, little brother? I don't know who Roberta is, but, um... Are you, are you okay? Might I, I intervene? What's... Yes. What did you that, do? That necklace that he's been wearing was cursed. Yeah. And whenever he gets angry, he goes berserk. Uh, yeah, suddenly, older sister gets, uh, what in the what? Face on and just looks at Nork. Really? Cursed object. Nork's gonna look look at his sister and say, "I mean, it was a it was a mistake at first, but yeah, 
and no, he's gonna just keel. Just gonna, just, he's gonna slump down onto the ground and just start bawling, just with with crying and and just uh, just kind of letting out all the frustration that he's had over this thing, and and suddenly losing his connection with Herberta and and uh, just totally break down. Oops, I hit my mic. <laughs> He's gonna totally just have a, a complete breakdown and just sob down on uh, onto the ground face first. Damn. <laughs> um, Herbert actually comes up to you and like does the whole like sit or sit down thing and just nuzzles you and gavin just like pats you as he like sits up Kalise hmm. is you know frolicking <laughs> i just had to mention that Kalise is just out there this is frolicking yeah frolicking i'm petting her birda because i'm concerned <laughs> yeah, it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I guess when Herbert had nuzzled him a little bit, he kind of reached over, you know, rolled over a little bit, and reached over to Herberta and, and pet her face a bit. And you swear for an instant, you just hear, "It's okay." Nor's gonna kind of suck it up a little bit. <laughs> and nod his head. And he's gonna just gonna wipe all the tears off of his face just on his shirt. His, his shirt's getting a little bit damp from, from crying. And uh, he's gonna be like, I'm sorry. For, I'm, I'm sorry. For, uh, just everyone. I'm. I'm so sorry. Little bro, it, I'm gonna have to take you uh, somewhere. I mean, the town jails is kind of. It's a little full right now, but you know, you. I don't know what you were on, but you toppled a guard tower. Nark still has the strength, right? Uh, it has not been an hour, so yes. Yeah. Uh, Nark's gonna be like, he's gonna be like, I mean, I still feel a little, uh, I still feel kind of weird. And he's gonna, um, it's gonna like look around and and poke around for something just to grab onto, and he, he's gonna. You know, just... So as you're you're grabbing at like a pebble or whatever in the ground, you have your um, excavator moment where your hand just kind of like goes into the dirt a little bit too easily, and you pull like a chunk of round out and it's just gonna crumble and he's, he's just gonna crumble it in his hand and be like whoa yeah at this point you are crumbling gravel it's just just turning it to dust or sand or something just 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 crumbling <laughs> uh your sister whoa. looks a little horrified and like backs away I, I no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. No, it's just, I, are I, you are you sure yeah. it's okay, little bro? You're kind of acting well. You're acting more weird than you usually act. Perhaps it's a perhaps it's a side effect of the curse. Um, I don't know. Okay. Ran, give me a deception roll. Just really quick yeah. here. Yep, yep, yep. 
One second here. Deception. Yes. Oh yeah. She she shakes her head. She kind of like thinks about it. And she's like, yeah, maybe it's just like afterglow or something. Please stay tuned for the next part of this episode. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Welcome to a special episode of Where the Wild Things Roll. My name is John and I will be your host and DM for this 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast set in the world of Ravarna. This podcast might be a tad different from others you've listened to. The two players will be my 12 year old son Kinnick and my 10 year old daughter Kaylee as they learn to play D&D through their very first campaign. We will pick up with our adventurers as they finish their time at Paduk's Adventurers Guild as they take their practical exams in dungeoneering, magical beasts, weapons and armor, puzzle solving, diplomacy, history of the world, and magical cause and effect before they are set out into the world. Can our two adventurers pass their classes and become full-fledged members of the Adventurers Guild? You'll have to tune in and find out next time on Where the Wild Things Roll. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.